When we're going to surgery, we think about the surgery and the surgeon and the procedure that's going to be done, but we don't think so much about the anesthesia and the anesthesiologist, a very important thing. There's new information out showing that there are some kinds of anesthetics that are used commonly uh, as general anesthetics that cause real problems in terms of accelerating the process of Alzheimer's disease or something like it, so that there's actually a loss of neurons and there's a plaque formed and, uh, and cognitive dysfunction that follows. So choosing an anesthetic is really important. We tend to think of general or we think of spinal, and both of them have their pluses and minuses. Uh, in general, when we have major, major surgeries that involve bypass procedures, we know that we get something called anesthesia brain, where there's a loss of IQ points, and this has been documented in many studies. Spinal anesthesia can't be used in some kinds of surgeries, but it can be used in others, and, and it too has its problems because we know that sometimes when the anesthesia is given, uh, it can go up into the thoracic uh, nervous system uh, and cause problems with sympathetic paralysis. And I know that because that happened to me when I had my surgery. So if you want to learn more about this, you can go to the website drsabuta.com and, uh, and research that. But when we're picking uh, an anesthetic to be used, generally the anesthesiologist do, does that. But we should have a say in that and the surgeon should be aware of it as well. For example, there's one anesthetic that's commonly used, it's called forain. And there's been a study now on mice, uh, on mammalian brains, okay, that uh, shows that there's a dysfunction with an Alzheimer's-like disease that follows it. And there's a, a, an associated reduction in energy production because there's less production of ATP. There's increased free radical damage that occurs, so we age faster. Uh, and we also know that the mitochondria, which is the energy producing part of our cells that makes ATP, has an increase in permeability, which is not a good sign. And lastly, it looks like there's an increased risk for death of neurons uh, as this anesthetic is used as well. Now, the people who published this article thought that perhaps this would be a silly anesthetic to use in people who have early Alzheimer's disease or a tendency for it. However, would you really want this anesthetic used in yourself when there are other options like suprain, which was studied along with forain and didn't show any of these changes. So the question is, how active are you gonna get when it comes to the surgical procedure you're having from the point of view of the anesthesia? Are you gonna to talk to your anesthesia sometime before, just prior to the time that you're having surgery? Or should you be meeting this person a lot sooner? perhaps a week or two before your surgery and discussing what kind of anesthesia you'd like to, to have and, and listening to what the anesthesiologist has to say because obviously this person should know more about it than we do. The other thing that's kind of striking is that we only stuck really with two major form or three major forms of anesthesia, local anesthesia, spinal anesthesia, and general anesthesia. And yet we know from studies that were done in China that the effect of acupuncture uh, to cause anesthesia is also very prominent. When President Nixon came back from China back in the mid-60s, he brought with him a video of someone having open chest surgery who had only acupuncture needles uh, as a form of anesthesia. You would think perhaps we'd have done more to study that, but I think the business of medicine has kept us in a place where that has been really kept from being brought forward. So general anesthesia is something that's important. We need to pay attention to it. We should be discussing that with our anesthesiologist and then making choices to see which form is best for us.